meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board is now in session. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Mr. Chair, I have a motion before we get into regular business. Okay. Can you in pull your mic down? Of a, in honor of a, uh, one of our distinguished members who's having his birthday today and still came to Planning Board, I move that we <laughs> sing happy birthday to Dan. Oh, God. Hey. Do, do I have a second? <laughs> you don't, you don't, want, I don't, know, you want, to hear you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> He needs, a, he needs a second. We need All a second. second. All right. Does anybody want to offer a friendly amendment? <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? Okay. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Happy birthday, dear Dan. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. I was that was Tuesday. Oh my God. All right, uh, approval of the minutes. Does anyone have any comments, questions, corrections? If not, I need a motion. Move that we accept the minutes as submitted for the January 21, 2020 meeting. Thank you, a second? Second. Pete, all in favor? It's unanimous. Great. The next item on the agenda is the school access, uh, I'm sorry, the school ADA access ramp site plan amendment. The town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting an amendment to the previously approved school campus site plan to upgrade an existing access ramp to the school athletic fields located behind the Cape Elizabeth Middle School at 12 Scott Dyer Road. Um, according to section 19.9, site plan completeness and public hearing. So we, this is a hearing for completeness and followed by a public hearing. So, uh, do you want to go first? No, go the end. Okay, so you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Robert Malley. I'm the director of public works representing the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the town has enlisted the services of Sebago Technics uh, to perform the engineering and uh, uh, shepherd us through the planning board process. Uh, Steve Harding, our town engineer, is here tonight to present, along with Dan Danvers, his associate uh, from Sebago Technics. So I'll pass the baton to Steve. Great. Okay. for a project at the uh, school complex. Uh, we have the, one of the drawings uh, in the packet that we uh, submitted in front of you. Uh, this is, uh, can get you oriented here. This is the uh, middle school parking lot. The middle school in Pond Cove would be up here. Holman Field would be over in this area. This is the uh, multi-purpose uh, soccer. Uh, I just believe they play lacrosse and some other sports over here. And then uh, Capano Field would be over here to the left off the screen. Essentially what we're proposing to do, there's a gravel uh, access drive here now that ends about in this spot. And then it's kind of uh, kind of beaten down grass down through here. And it's very difficult for uh, people with uh, accessible needs to make it to the ball field uh, area down below. And uh, a lot of people um, sit on this slope here to watch some of the sports. So what we're proposing to do is uh, add pavement and basically grade an area down to a, a viewing area here and then continue on over to a viewing area here where you could watch the baseball field uh, again over in, in this area. Um, there are some parking spaces up here. Um, we're going to strike one of those and make these two van accessible parking spaces. There'll be a tactile warning strip here with a couple of tip down curb sections here. And then uh, we wouldn't exceed 5% for a distance of a vertical drop of more than 30 feet. And then it would be 2% through this area into this viewing stand. 
I'll try to boil that up a little bit here. Oops, so we didn't lose it there. So it would be 5% coming down here and then 2% here, and we go 5% again and then flatten out uh, to the other viewing stand. Um, we are asking for a couple of waivers uh, for this project. One is uh, the right title and interest, and the other is the boundary survey. Both of those documents are on town file. It's routine to ask for a waiver uh, on school pro projects for those types of things. Um, the uh, stormwater piece, uh, we had in our memo that we were creating 4,200 square feet, but uh, Todd Gammon, when he did the peer review out of Blaze Engineering, noticed that uh, we didn't seem to have that much area. And it's actually closer to 2,150 square feet of area. So that, that would be the, the new impervious area. And that, again, a portion of that is going over a gravel area up above. Uh, when we create this viewing stand, we'll put concrete wheel stops on the front of it, just to add a, a little more protection there. And then there's a section of guardrail we'll take out where we set a little bit of it right there, just to provide a little more protection coming down the ramp. Um, the stormwater would basically sheet flow uh, as it does today. There's some flat swales that go around the fields, uh, so that it's going to go into a flat area. Uh, should be no impact there uh, whatsoever for the uh, for the stormwater segment. A lot of the normal type things you, you uh, would go over with a site plan, landscaping, lighting, uh, noise, exterior storage, those things don't really apply. We're not changing anything in those uh, categories. There's no storage nearby. Um, the town has put this in its CIP program, so it's budgeted for construction, and there's a email from uh, our letter from Matt uh, Sturgis, town manager in your packet about that. Um, Maureen did notice uh, that we do have some utilities. There's an irrigation line here and an electrical line. Uh, we'll certainly locate that before we get into construction more clearly. Uh, we don't see that as being impacted though uh, through this project. Um, I do have a letter here from uh, Todd Gammon, again from Blaze Engineering, did a peer review. Uh, he brought up a couple of points and uh, we have no problem with addressing them. Uh, one of them is that we need would provide a tip down for the uh, granite curbs here that we're gonna be installing. And another comment that Todd made, I can get my screen to behave, is over here um, where we're restriping the existing uh, spots in order for those to be uh, ADA compliance spaces, they can't exceed 2%. So we have back in the survey data, we do have spot grades there, and it doesn't exceed 1.5% in any direction. So we'll, his suggestion was to add those existing spot grades on there. We can certainly do that. Uh, another point that he had come up with, we show 5% and 2%. Uh, we got our contours a little too close together in this area. Uh, they're greater than 5%, but we can bring this contour down and this one extend this one down. So we'll certainly do that and make sure we have that corrected uh, in the uh, uh, follow-up to, uh, to Todd's comments. Another comment he made was we should add a uh, label not to exceed a 2% cross slope across the, the um, the access way here. Uh, in these areas, this is a, probably a better way to just depict that graphically. We've gotten our contours a little bit more skewed here than they should be. That should be more, uh, not quite perpendicular across there, but less of an angle than what we're showing. So we'll make those adjustments and add that 2% uh, grade change, uh, grade note on there. And then in the viewing boxes itself, these shouldn't be more than 2%. Um, we've got a that we meant these spot grades to be uh, in the corners, uh, but if you assume they were a foot on the inside, then they would be a, uh, greater than 2%, slightly greater. So we're gonna make that adjustment. We'll put some notes on that as well. And uh, I think, I think those, uh, that addresses all the comments that Todd had. And uh, I think uh, if you folks have any questions, we'd certainly like to answer them. Okay, does anybody have a quick question? We can answer them all. Okay, so um, we have a public hearing scheduled, so I will open the meeting to a public hearing for any comments on 
the, comp the completeness of this application. Please introduce yourself. My name's Andy Strout and I'm the phys ed teacher at the middle school. I just wanna know if there was any consideration in this plan to add more um, accessibility to the tennis courts for students in the middle school. We have a wheelchair student that we addressed this when they were in fourth grade to be able to get access to the tennis court. And that's what I thought we were gonna gain with, with this proposal here, that we might be able to do something getting down there. I don't know if it was in that plan to look at that or, or what, what happened to that, that possibility. Um, I looked at this, I saw this drawing probably a month ago and brought it and it came to the attention of, of our superintendent that we're still losing out on that access to the tennis court. What happens is this student right now has to go down the road from the middle school, leave class early to go down the road to get to the parking lot, which is down off of, by the high school, to go to the walkway, which is accessible, to get to, the to get to our class. She loses 15 minutes of class and she has to leave 10 minutes early to get back up. So I didn't know if that was even thought of um, because four years ago, we three years ago, we brought this up to, for, to uh, the people at, uh, at the middle school that this was gonna be an issue and now it looks like we were only dealing with just getting someone part way to the athletic field. Um, and it sounds like it's mostly just for spectators versus students with ADA issues. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to make a comment? Okay, seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, anybody on the board have any questions? Not on completeness, you're talking about. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, on completeness. It seems like we have. I don't know, so I don't know where that question fits on the it, consideration. Probably in the next okay. portion. Okay. Okay, so can I have a motion? Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth, uh, the, the town of Cape Elizabeth for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the school campus to install paved ADA access ramp to the, to the athletic fields located behind the middle school located at 6 Scott Dye Road be deemed complete. Second. Jim seconds, all in favor, uh, any discussion? I was voting. All, all in favor? I think, oh, okay. Yeah. Dan, we had some discussion. Did you want to? No. no. In favor. Okay, it's unanimous. It unanimous? Right. Okay, so um, before we leap into it, does anybody feel that they, we need a site visit to this? No. I don't, I, I don't at all. Well, sorry, can I? Yeah. I don't, it would be helpful given that question to see I don't know the area well enough to, to just be able to envision where that is related, related to the tennis courts at all, or if they're, I mean, obviously these are almost two separate issues, but if it's literally like 10 feet further and you get to the tennis courts, which I don't know anything about. Um, it's, it's, so, it's not. It's, it's not. There's a whole across it's, it's field a in whole. between. I mean, I'd let, so, uh, we can have Stephen yeah, so that, that, address that. My only point was, I, I, mean, I don't need a site visit for, I mean, for what they have here, it seems very, obvious, but it would be nice to have an overview somehow of the whole complex for me. Anyway, like as a picture or something, a map. Okay. But, so you want a site? No, 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 okay. I, I mean, I mean, it's clear there what they're trying to achieve. So I, I don't need that, but if they could, considering that question, if they could show a map of the whole complex and say, this is where this is happening, you, you can right. use that picture on the wall back there. <laughs> Literally. Let's, that's it. 
do you guys want, do either of you want to address that question? Okay. I think Steve's bringing up Google Do you know who do it? Oh, I don't think his computers connect to the internet. Oh. That's, and I can get a computer to connect to the internet if you don't wait five minutes. Well, uh, Joe, the thing that strikes me, I mean, I sympathize with the point the gentleman made about a need for the, the walkway, but what we have before us tonight is a project which includes this work, but does not include in any way, shape, or form a sidewalk to the tennis courts, and it seems to me that's something for the town and the school department to sort out and come in with a separate proposal if that's what they'd like to achieve, but I don't think we can do anything this evening on the point because there's just, we have nothing before us on it. Sure. The other thing, um, it looks pretty basic. It's just a paved area, but I can tell you that the applicant and the applicant's engineer has spent a, a tremendous amount of time with topography, calculating slopes to get this to meet ADA standards. So it's, it's, it's deceptively simple. process of working on the design of this, we did have a meeting with the school superintendent, and I believe it was the middle school principal, and shared uh, the proposal with them, and at the time, they did not bring up the, uh, the idea of a need for ADA accessibility to the tennis courts. If you look in the parking lot to your right, the ADA access to the tennis courts is from that parking lot, and I can appreciate Mr. Strout's concern about having to go around, but that is to my knowledge, the ADA compliant access to the courts. But uh, in our discussions with the superintendent, uh, accessibility to the tennis courts uh, did not come up. It was more okay, well, I think it's also clear from the picture that, I mean, if you can just point to where the area of your, of this project, and then obviously extending that walkway all the way to the tennis courts, the, another project. Absolutely. And it might or might not happen at some point. But taking Pete's point, it's really not part of this discussion. That's correct. So, um, other than that, does anyone have any questions or comments about the proposal? I just, um, my concerns were addressing the comments of the reviewing engineer, and that's already been discussed, so I'm, I'm satisfied. Okay. I just wanted to say thanks for. <laughs> Showing me the overview because I it's it's not, it's better to get a sort of sense of where this is in space. So um, I see the issues are non-issues now. I guess in a way. Anyone at that end? No, I I, I I think what Peter says is correct with the application that's in front of us. But I think Mr. Stroud brings up a very good point that the school should consider in the future. Okay, anyone want, wish to make a motion? I know, Jonathan, you want this yeah, one? Yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, uh, motion for approval, findings of fact. Uh, number one, the town of Cape Elizabeth is requesting an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the school campus to install a paved access ramp to the athletic fields located behind the middle school located at 6 Scott Dyer Road, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations. Number two, the school ramp improvement reflects the natural capabilities of the site to support development. Number three, the school ramp improvement includes parking lot 
changes that will not uh, that will uh, be in accordance with section 19-7-8 off street parking number 4 the school ramp improvement does provide for a system of pedestrian ways within the development number 5 the school ramp improvement does provide for adequate collection and discharge of stormwater Number six, the school ramp improvement will not cause soil erosion based on the erosion plan submitted. Number seven, the school ramp improvement with confirmation using dig safe protocols uh, will not disrupt existing site utilities. Number eight, the school ramp improvement uh, will locate store or dis, uh, excuse me, will not locate store or discharge materials harmful to surface or groundwaters. Number nine, the applicant has demonstrated adequate technical and financial capability to complete the project. Number 10, the school ramp improvement uh, does not include exterior lighting. Number 11, the school ramp improvement does not include any vegetative uh, buffer removal. Number 12, the development uh, will not, excuse me, will not substantially increase noise levels and cause human discomfort. Number 13, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 on site plan regulations. Therefore, be it ordered that based upon the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the town of Cape Elizabeth for an amendment to the previously approved site plan for the school campus to install a paved ADA access ramp to the athletic fields located behind the middle school located at 6 Scott Dyer Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number one, that the the, that the plans be revised to address the comments of the acting town engineer Todd Gammon in his letter dated 2 12 2020 and number two the, that dig safe protocols be applied to the area of construction Second. any discussion all in favor it's unanimous motion passes uh, the board is going to recognize Maureen O'Meara for a minute here. I just wanted to um, make sure the board is aware that Public Works Director Bob Malley has announced that he will be retiring in July. It's likely that this is the last time he's going to be at a planning board meeting. And so I wanted to take this opportunity to recognize his many years of service and also to note that he has been um, not just a guardian of infrastructure in Cape Elizabeth, but a proponent of good planning in the infrastructure and always a supporter of this board and providing the information we need. And I, I just wanted to recognize um, his excellent service as a public servant. Yay. Now that she's thoroughly embarrassed you, you can go on. <laughs> You're welcome to come to as many meetings as you want. <laughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda. Yam Yams LLC is requesting site plan review to convert a vacant building and site into a retail lumber store with a business office, workshop, and class space, food truck, farmer's market, and live music located at 287 Ocean House Road. This is an application for completeness and the application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19.9 site plan regulations and section 19.64 town center design requirements. Um, so go ahead and you can introduce the project. Hi, my name is my name is Mike Friedland, and uh, I recently purchased 287 Ocean House Road, the old Cumberland Farms. And um, my goal is to um, propose a new business that, um, sorry, that works with the community for the community. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, and my, my overall plan is to bring a business into that lot that's been vacant for six years that benefits the everyday lives of people within the community. And to that end, um, my primary use is going to be um, my new business called Lumbery, which is essentially a small building supply company with a conscience, with an environmental and social conscience. 
and um, I could get more into that later regarding the environmental and social purposes. And uh, also, as part of my project, I want to teach classes and um, what else are we going to have? And for the community, and these items aren't necessarily, in fact, these items aren't for my behalf at all because I will not be getting any monetary gain for them, but I'd love to have food trucks and to um, host a farmer's market and to potentially have acoustical live music and um, just items that I will not gain from, but I think the community could really uh, benefit from. And um, so I've got Jim Fisher here to talk about more details and Mike Backman, my designer, to talk about the building itself. But um, ultimately, it's an existing building that my goal is to repurpose and to make incredibly beautiful and welcoming to and enhance everyone's lives every day. So I'll let that. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. Uh, Mike has obviously uh, already introduced the project, and we were here a month ago uh, speaking to it at a workshop in this very room. Um, so uh, without rehashing some of the things that we talked about there, what I would like to do is, given the chance that you've had to go through the packets, um, based on the town's reviewing engineer and the town planner's comments, just um, address a few of the things in here that we would like to go forward with and, uh, and uh, solicit any comments and any questions, address any questions that you may have. Um, there are a few things in here that are brought up by the uh, uh, by both the planner and the engineer uh, that uh, we yet need to be able to provide to you. So we are not looking for completeness this evening, um, and we are not uh, looking for a specific final vote on this. We expect to do that next time. But what we would like to do is go through enough of the project and uh, discuss it enough to be able to have your suggestions and then act on those within the course of the uh, of the days in front of us. And then we will obviously submit this for. Uh, completeness review and ostensibly approvals with or without condition at the next time that we meet. So Can in I essence, I'd like to- interrupt you for a second. You're asking us not to take a vote on completeness? Well, I mean, we can certainly do that if you wish. Um, I think there's a few things in here that, uh, for instance, like the VRAP program, uh, that's under where there are a few things that are underway that we don't have. Um, so toward that end, when we were here last time, uh, one of the suggestions was we could either come back to another workshop or we could go back to the full planning board, um, which is what we've chosen to do so that we can officially solicit the comments that you would like. So you had a question? Mm -hmm. My question for you was can, can they request that we not take a vote on completion? Well, at the end of this item, you have to do something. And your choices are complete or incomplete. So okay. if, they're, if they're saying they, they're not looking for completeness tonight, then your, your choice is won. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Proceed, please. Okay. So um, just to go through a couple of the things that uh, we'd like to be able to uh, explain and then also get some clarity on. Um, one of the issues was the building footprint. The architect will be... Uh, uh, coming up uh, just shortly to be able to explain essentially what the layout of the building is going to look like as far as the inside is concerned. Uh, that's the layout of the offices, the classroom, uh, the retail center, uh, et cetera. And uh, in conjunction with that, um, we will end up showing that the next set of criteria, the actual uh, exterior of the building, which isn't changing from what you see on the plan behind you, but uh, we will provide that information uh, as opposed to the interior portion of the building that's split up amongst all the classroom, the classroom and the retail site, et cetera. Um, one of the changes that we are going to be uh, uh, making is that uh, we were proposing to be located behind the building just a storage facility, a small storage shed. Uh, we're no longer looking to do that. Um, so the storage shed that would actually be behind the structure, we're not looking to be able to have that anymore. We just, we don't need it. Uh, as far as uh, traffic is concerned, uh, loading and unloading areas, uh, I thought we would specify that between the end of the building and the, uh, the uh, storage uh, shed that is shown on there. And we can certainly designate that on the plan. That's not an issue. Uh, as far as uh, some of that traffic is concerned, there was also a question about, for instance, the frequency of classes and the number of students. So we want to clarify that this is not going to be like a high school classroom or a university classroom. All this is really is a, uh, an offering for up to typically six people uh, at any given time 
in the evenings after the store has actually closed. So the only use at that point in time would be a classroom uh, scenario where people who would be willing to or want to learn a little bit about uh, the typical type of woodworking that they might want to do at their own homes. This is where they would uh, come on a scheduled basis. They sign up for these classes. It would be taught by Michael or one of his assistants. And it's a very small endeavor, but uh, it's a small area, small classroom, as it were. It's, again, not a practical classroom like we often think about school classrooms. It's more of a, an area, sort of like the wood shop in the, uh, the high school, except it would be limited essentially to six individuals who would pre-sign up and come in and learn how to work uh, certain bits of uh, woodworking equipment and be able to create their own uh, woodworking things for their own home, for instance, window sills or uh, building a built-in bookcase or something of that effect, something that's quite, sim it's quite uh, simple. And again, we, we look to uh, do that maybe two times a week after hours. So as far as traffic and parking on the site is concerned, uh, that should not be an issue because everybody else for the retail center for any of the other uses would not be utilizing the facility at that time. As far as the food truck is concerned, this is something, as Michael had mentioned, that uh, has never really been tried here, notwithstanding um, like Family Fun Day or the, uh, the areas in uh, uh, Fort Williams Park, uh, the Strawberry Festival, for instance. This would be something that uh, we just simply like to try. Uh, we think it would work. We think it would be very well received. It might not work. We'll see what happens. But uh, as far as the food trucks are concerned, we propose to be able to uh, park them not on the pavement as you see it. Uh, when we were here last time, we talked about expanding the amount of vegetated surface. The parking lot right now essentially goes all the way up to and is actually a little bit past the setback lines, the front setback lines. Uh, pursuant to municipal regulations, we have expanded the, not, the vegetated area considerably uh, to the point of adding about 8,000 square feet or over one third of the site, converting it from the parking lot of the asphalt that's there now to vegetated surfaces. That's the area where the food truck would be. Uh, toward that end, we also estimate that there would be seating to the extent that anybody who goes to a food truck actually wants to sit down. Uh, there might be a few people, but this is not a conventional restaurant. We've all been to Family Fun Day and the Strawberry Festivals, and we know that a lot of people go to food trucks. They may grab a burger or a hot dog or whatever's available, and then they would typically either uh, get back in their cars and leave, or they might you know, stroll the grounds a little bit on the grass area, or they might sit down. And we would be able to provide picnic tables there that would be permanent, uh, seasonal, but permanent at the time, uh, upwards of 20 spaces. The number of, uh, um, as far as traffic is concerned, we're talking about a number of anticipated trips and we can certainly uh, speak to that. We've addressed that all on the plans right now in terms of uh, the number of spaces that are required and uh, we would just emphasize that to a greater degree in terms of the anticipated uh, uh, trips. Uh, we would ask the board to consider a waiver uh, for doing a full traffic study. The reason being is that we've had one very recently, or the town had one very recently, uh, given the project that's immediately next door here, uh, that uh, took into consideration the same areas. Remember, up to uh, about uh, four years ago, five years ago, this place was an active gas station, a service station, and a, uh, it was the Cumberland Farms that subsequently moved across the street. So the intensity of the traffic was fairly great. It has been vacant for the last several years, to be sure. Uh, but the intensity of the traffic was considerably greater and we're not proposing to uh, add on to the building beyond what you see. The point being is that the retail lumbery is not a convenience store. It's not a gas station. It's not a short order store. We don't expect people to be coming in and out very quickly. It's not even a hardware store. It's something that's a place for people to be able to come uh, ask the proprietor some questions about lumber. Uh, and uh, wood products and then uh, ostensibly collect those products and then leave and perhaps hopefully come back for a class at a later date. So the intensity of use is significantly less uh, than it was and uh, given the traffic study that has been completed and uh, did highlight a lot of the information at this intersection, meaning uh, Ocean House Road, Scott Dyer Road and Shore Road, uh, we really don't see that a traffic study for this particular site is really going to tell us anything that we don't already know. So toward that end, we would like to be able to solicit your comments uh, here shortly about a, um, a waiver for a full traffic study toward that end. Also, uh, stormwater was brought up. Um, this project is, the overall site right now is grandfathered to the extent that about uh, a little less than half of the site is actually covered with asphalt. 
Uh, we are again getting rid of uh, over a third of that by revegetating it. Uh, so when you talk about low impact development, all, almost all of the storm water that you see in this site, which is very flat, there's only about one and a half feet of contour that's on across the entire paved area, uh, all of that is flowing downhill, down Ocean House Road, which is into the 40% of this lot that is all naturally vegetated, which you can see to the north of this property. Uh, we have no intention of going there whatsoever. We're leaving it the way it is. That's where the storm water from the uh, uh, asphalt goes right now. Plus, by getting rid of over a third of the pavement, any other additional storm water that would fall in the area that is to the east, uh, you can see the blue line there on that uh, graph, uh, on that graphic. Uh, that area, which is all pavement right now, is going to be revegetated completely. Uh, so toward that end, we're looking at a vegetated surface that will absorb all that storm water as well. So from a doing a separate storm water report, we're already significantly lessening the, uh, the amount of uh, impervious surface area, and, and we'd also like to be able to have a waiver on any storm water or storm water reporting. As far as the utilities are concerned, the utilities are shown on there. There is a break in the sewer line. It does go to connect to the building, and we show where the sewer is located in the, uh, in the street in Scott Dyer Road. Uh, we will connect that line. Uh, that was not identified when Dick Smart was out there, but uh, we know where that connection is. All the other utility lines are shown on there, and those utility lines are going to remain the same. As far as the lighting is concerned, there was a question about lighting along uh, Ocean House Road, but there are, and, and feel free to take a look at this tonight because the lights are on, obviously, there are three utility poles, each one of which has a Cobra light, that are all immediately adjacent to this site, uh, the working area of this site, the paved area of the site, that are along Ocean House Road, plus there are two uh, individually lighted private poles that are already on the site, and we intend to leave there, there those there as well. <coughs> Uh, in the interest of, uh, relatively speaking, the dark skies, uh, having especially the diffused light from the Cobra lights, the street lights, uh, we really don't see a need to add any more lighting, particularly along the sidewalk area since that's where the Cobra lights are sticking. Um, so toward that end, we don't think that there's a, uh, um, any type of a lighting analysis that would be further beyond what we've already shown uh, that would be further required for any additional lighting on uh, Ocean House Road. Uh, signage, we've got a, a signage in there. Um, we're going to uh, revamp that signage a little bit, refine it a little bit. The sign company will take a look at that and uh, provide us with a, a little bit more of a uh, specific drawing toward that end. And then uh, finally, as far as noise is concerned, there was a question about uh, providing any decibel levels. What we'd like to point out is that at this shop, at this store, uh, the only time that there's actually going to be anything that's really generating any noise at all would be in the evening classes, and that's early evening classes. Uh, but after hours, it would be inside the building, and it's essentially the loudest piece of equipment is a circular saw. So it would be like running a circular saw in your garage or in your basement. Uh, that's it. Uh, one piece of equipment toward that end, uh, the other equipment, that's the loudest that would be there, and it's in a totally sealed building. There are no garage doors that would be opened out to the outside or anything like that. It's, it's completely enclosed when the classes are going on. So as far as uh, any type of noise studies or decibel levels or what have you, uh, there really isn't any, I don't believe there's a need for that, so we'd like to be able to have a, a waiver toward that end as well, uh, only because, again, the loudest piece of equipment would be a circular saw operating in the early evening. Um, other than that, i um, got a couple of uh, questions uh, for you and uh, uh, talking about, uh, well, actually, one further point is the, uh, the VRAP program. There is a VRAP. This, Mr. Chairman, is the reason why uh, we've stated that uh, we're not necessarily looking for completion. But having said that, um, if you feel, the board feels that we would like, because we've addressed all of these different items, uh, would like to give us completeness, we'd certainly be able to take it. Um, but we don't have that. There is a VRAP program in place, uh, and we've got the DEP is working on that right now regarding the change of name. Uh, to the existing owner. And uh, the VRAP program, by the way, is uh, done primarily when there are any types of soils that are disturbed that may have been considered uh, toxic at one point, and this was a gas station. Uh, the VRAP program was issued, the tanks were removed effectively, the DEP bought off on this, signed off on that. Uh, so essentially what we're doing in conjunction, we'd like to leave it the way it is, but in conjunction with uh, what you asked last time, uh, by increasing the vegetated area, we'll be removing some of the asphalt, about uh, almost 8,000 square feet of that. No soil other than the soil that's immediately attached to that asphalt 
um, is we're proceeding or we're uh, proposing to um, to do. Ex there's no excavation. There's no soils that are going to be removed from this site. But again, the uh, the DEP is working on that through the environmental engineering company, and we expect that anytime. Could be tomorrow. Could be two weeks from now. Uh, and that is essentially it. So after that, I'd like to be able to just uh, solicit any questions that you might have and or solicit any comments that you might have and address any questions. Uh, but we can certainly also keep that um, after the architect has spoken just a little bit about the, the building itself. And then we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, I've just kind of put together some drawings of what Michael's proposing. And uh, if you have any questions or stuff that you'd like to see Closer, I mean, I can play a little animation here of what the building's gonna look like. Um, and this kind of, when it circles around here, this is a wood siding. Uh, you can see the signage right there um, of Mike's sign here for the lumbery. Um, same thing on the front of the building. Um, Nothing much changing on the building except for the look of it, the cladding, the roofing, the solar panels. Um, and as far as the um, interior of the building, I have that all ready for permit drawings. Um, but I'm more or less here to speak about the exterior of the building. And if there's anything you guys would like to see closer, I'm happy to show you that. Um, This is the, the interior layout, of, or proposed interior layout of the uh, structure. Um, here would be the roof, uh, the accessory building there, not accessory building, but the, the freestanding structure for wood storage. Um, can, can you go back to the floor plan and yep. just walk us through? Um, so this bottom section would be um, the front of the building. Um, door would be right here. Um, reception area here, small kitchen at sink coffee area here. Um, upper left would be the utility room with the electrical panel and whatnot, all of which is exactly where it is currently. Toilet is right where it is currently. Um, <coughs> minor little reconfiguration of the bathroom, um, ADA bathroom, I'm sure. Um, Michael's office here. Um, and then this just shows proposed racking and shelving and such. Um, a uh, little staircase here that leads you up to an elevated sort of mezzanine for uh, Michael's woodworking shop. Um, and there'll be lumber storage beneath it. Okay, so where's, there's a second door on all the elevations towards the right there. Um, you have a double, yeah. So this would be a new door, which is going in the, opening, the, 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 the structural opening of what used to be a garage door. So nothing, no structural modifications there at all except for putting a door in there, two glass side lights. And is that meant for customers? Uh, that's... It's, yeah. it's a glass side door. So one is for customers and the others? Well, they're both for customers, but okay. one's bigger so that they have more room for them. Okay, continue. Could I ask you your name, please? Uh, Mike Backman. I own Waterhouse Builders. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So this, the glazing and the side, this meets the, the town center requirements for glazing and such? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is the um, the upper area, the classroom area that we just said, heard about? Yep. Go ahead. Question? Hmm? What's the question? That's the classroom area. That yeah, we this, this is the uh, kind of a raised platform here. Okay. Um, and that just shows it without tools. And here's just some kind of tools to show its proportions. What do you have for sawdust collection and removal and such? Um, back. So back. We got, uh, yeah, ducks the back. You want to come to oh, the sure. We've got a, it's all contained ducks that go right to exterior vacuums. Okay. The container units. 
Where's where are the vacuums going to be located? I'm assuming on the exterior. Yeah, which exterior. side? Which side of the exterior? On the right side. Okay. And those would be noise compliant because I know that those things make noise. Yes, definitely. All right. Do you want to continue? You were about to show the uh, storage unit. Uh, no, we are not doing this, the storage unit. What's, okay. What's the question about the storage unit? Well, if you're not doing it, there's no question. Well, <laughs> we well I the story. We initially had a storage container behind the building, but... Um, no, the storage oh, shed. Oh, the, 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 the framing, the... Yes, uh, you, yeah, that's this. where you were when I asked you that question. Right, so that's the, the um, you know, that's just an exterior um, lumber rack, if you will. Okay. Freestanding on a slab, basically. And that's behind the fences next to the dumpster? No? Uh, uh, yep, just that would be, if I, it's, it would be located. That's located on the site plan. That right. That you yeah, I'm just trying to get a feel of where on the, I know what's on there. Yeah, it's right okay. here. It's pilot that's it. right now. Yep. The, yep. And the container behind the building you're not going to do. No. Okay. Um, so I have... I, I'd like to get Jim back one second to ask a very simple question. So you've listed six basic uses, the farmer's market, the food truck, acoustic concerts, retail, office, and evening class. Yes. That's your complete list, right? Yes. I, think, I think one of the most industrial use, just I think Ben said it, we have saws and all we need. Right, but you didn't mention it. Oh, you did mention it? He, you did not mention it. I thought it was in the... Um... Oh, you didn't mention it just now. So what... I'm just trying to get the full picture. Sure. I'm not trying to trip you up or anything. So it's industrial. The principal use of the entire structure, the entire project actually is the lumber, is the retail store. And then in conjunction with that, it's uh, listed as a business office. It's not really a business office. It's an individual's office, as any retailer typically has a small office to be able to take care of financials, et cetera. So it's just a small office there. One person, uh, the, the, uh, the bookkeepers and what have you are actually off-site. Okay. So are, are you eventually going to provide some sort of layout for the farmer's market, the food trucks, and how the acoustic concerts yes. would work? Yep. We'll show where the uh, everything would be located, which would be in the lower right-hand section of the southeasterly section, which is the revegetated area. Um, those are going to be similar uses. In other words, the food trucks are not going to be there when the farmer's market is going to be there, which is not going to be there when any of the acoustic bands would be there. Um, so right, these are so your application would make all that clear. Yes. Right. Okay. The final application will show all of that. All right. Does anybody have any quick questions? Because I want to open it up for public comment and then come back to us. Are we so good with okay. uh, Sorry, t uh, okay. maybe two quick questions. One, one, you were talking about the VRAP program, and there was one thing that was sort of glazed over kind of quickly about a sewer line that was not that was found not to be connected. No, it's connected. It's uh, there's a sewer line that exists, yeah. and we're not proposing to change that. In fact, its use would be substantially less typically than what was there when the Cumberland Farms was active. That comes <coughs> off of Scott Dyer Road. It's already underneath the road. It comes onto the site, and we know where the connection is at the uh, southeasterly corner of the building, and that's where the bathrooms are. And it's not going to be changed anyway. What I just wanted to mention is there's a connection on the plan that we need to show that isn't there because right now, but we will show it because when uh, DigSmart came out to be able to locate that, they couldn't find that specific location. Oh, okay, but so we know it's a direct connect to the building. So, so no, so uh, yeah, I was just trying to confirm there was no. You, you said there was no other excavation other than the, the pavement. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. I was a little bit confused by the that. There's no statement. excavation okay. for any new, so, any Perfect. new utility lines. And my second point, um, which partly gets at his, I think, is you're, you're talking about waiver to measuring noise levels at the um, on the property, but if you're talking about music outside, obviously. I mean, I don't know how I, I don't know how the board's done this in the past to determine potential noise at the boundary, but so here's the thing: you can't waiver a standard, right? So if they have to, if their noise 
level has to drop to whatever it has to drop to at the boundary line. They have to, they have to achieve that. And we need some sort of, I mean, you could say, sure, if, there, if it's an operation that makes no noise, you might accept not being provided with any evidence, but they have a wood shop, they have a lot going on, so I, I would not in any way support a waiver of a noise measurement. Thanks. Jim. Uh, maybe it's a question for Ma Maureen. The canopy that was removed isn't shown anywhere on this, and it needs to be, I assume, just to meet that letter of what's needed? Actually, I, I would say that the applicant needs to show existing conditions, and not showing the canopy is fine. But you don't need to say uh, canopy has since been removed, just... Because the applicant is submitting a new site plan, okay. and I, you know, I don't think they have to address that specifically. Okay. I think we all know it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and um, another question on the, the request for a waiver for the traffic study. I get it. My gut feeling, I mean, it was you come on farm, a lot of cars coming in and out, and there will be less. I get it. But if we waive that, based on past, um, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm doing a word search. Does that expose the planning board and the town to anything by waiving that when we haven't waived it for other people? Um, you know, you, you need to, if, if an applicant gives you a reason that you find reasonable to grant a waiver, and another applicant in a similar situation gives you the same reason, you have to grant that waiver as well. Um, so it is a little bit of back and forth. Um, okay. I guess you know what I'm getting at. I, I don't. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the lighting at uh, a formally proposed pizza place in... The, this, this is the thing. There's the, as as the applicant has made clear, there's a lot of different uses going on on this property. And I think the most recent presentation tonight, the applicant has refined somewhat um, how many things could be happening at any one time, which was a good thing to do. Uh, but what we need to remember is that once the board, for example, grants permission for people to hold concerts on this property, you don't really have any control after that. Your control is completely related to what you do with that approval. So for example, at the workshop, the applicant suggested the concerts might have 85 attendees. If, if you grant an approval that says you allow concerts for up to 85 attendees, and somebody else buys property or, or the applicant wants to allow someone else to run a concert on the property for 85 attendees and you find out you have a traffic nightmare, there's not a lot you can do. You can call the code officer and the code officer will come into my office and sh ask me to show him the plan and it says 85 attendees and th there's really nothing else we can do. That's why as the planning board you need to look to the future and if you grant X, you need to imagine anyone doing X. Carol Ann. Okay. Jim brought up the traffic study. I was gonna wait, but I'll, I'll go with it. I understand what you're saying as far as a traffic study related to the lumbery and the fact that the uh, trips in and out in something like the lumbery were, would be much less than Cumberland Farms. But if you start talking a farmer's market, you've got in and out traffic going. Uh, the concert brings up more traffic intensity, which would cause me concern for waiving a traffic study. Just. Just throwing that out. Can we just take a quick little straw poll? Is anybody for waiving the uh, traffic study? Can I just mention one other yeah. one, one uh, related comment? I believe that the intersection of um, 77 and Scott Dyer Road is has been looked at as a high risk intersection, mm -hmm. uh, which it is what it is. And I, I think I agree with Carol Ann that some of those uses look pretty sparse, but it's a matter of intensity of traffic flow. And I think some of the things you're talking about, the intensity uh, is such that I think you ought to address it. So 
Don or Dan, would you like to argue for a waiver of traffic? No. No. <laughs> okay. No. So it's pretty much unanimous. Okay, not that's fine. Those are the that. comments we were looking for. <laughs> yep. Okay, moving on. Um, yes, I'd like to open. Uh, oh, sorry, just a second. If possible, I'd like um, Adam's also part of He's on my council, so we can have some time to add to what we've already said. That'd be great. Okay. Just two quick points. Um, thank you, Adam Steinman. Uh, we're incurring a council to Mike on this and other projects. Um, what was said at first is we would love to get a completeness uh, vote today. I think the reason why we said that that's unlikely is because based on your last comments and based on what we just heard, we're not sure that we have, um, especially if you're not going to grant the waiver for the traffic, that we're, we're really there yet. Um, I will say that in the latest plan, we have absolutely got ourselves in gyrations to comply with your last requirement for the 35-foot setback for all parking on both sides. Um, you know, I, I live in Cape Elizabeth, I'm off Old Ocean House Road, I drive up past the uh, this site every day. There's not a single compliant parcel currently that has that complies with the 35 foot, meaning not the Caldwell Banker, not the Cumberland Farms, not the IGA, not the Town Hall. And um, in an effort to, you know, really appease this group and get this project forward, we're sort of turning ourselves up in knots with respect to the parking, but you know we sort of have acquiesced to that in hopes that um, you know some of the things that are being asked for could be looked you know looked at in the way that they were intended, which really is Michael doesn't just want to have a lumbery so that we have a place to buy good wood products and good tools in the town and a place to learn how to do DIY projects ourselves and use tools and the like. He really does want to give back to the community. And some of the additional activities that are being proposed are really solely to that end. He's doing them for altruistic reasons. Again, the parking is hurting our ability to do that in an effective way. But again, we are really trying to comply with all of the board's requirements meet the at least the intent of the central business standard and are open to whatever comments um, and recommendations and requirements this board is going to impose but i do hope that there is a realization of what he's trying to do here and what he's trying to accomplish and the fact that no one else seems to have to deal with the parking um, requirements is a hardship on this site and the development of it may i say something I don't think any one of us was talking about parking. I think some great efforts have been made on as far as the space and the, adding the green space and the parking. It's the in and out trips that are generated by these various uses that are causing the concern. The in and out trips for a, a farmer's market are very different than the in and out trips for a, a lumbery or a hardware store or however you want to uh, class this and also for a food truck. These are short, quick trips that are people in and out, in and out, and a very, already very dangerous intersection. Nothing to do with the parking. No, I, I understand that. Um, the, the parking is something that was a hardship to us in terms of complying with the 35-foot setback on both Scott Tire and 77, that it does not appear that any other business in the area has to meet, at least the existing ones. I'm not talking about the new development. I'm sure that's true. I'm sure it's also true with the key bank, with, with the new development on key bank. My point is that we are trying to play ball. We are trying to, to satisfy all the board's requirements. With respect, with respect to a noise study, um, their hands are, Mike's hands are tied in terms of developing the property at this point until there's approval for the uses. It's hard to do a noise study on equipment that's not there. We can certainly take um, decibel readings of a um, circular saw. Will that satisfy the board? I don't know. In terms of you know the concerts or the acoustical music that may be played on a few um, weekends a year during the summer, we're not talking about anything compared to the size of the bands that happen at the parades in front of um, you know, in front of the library. We're talking about four or five pieces of acoustic music, not brass bands and choirs, etc. Again, it's hard to get a noise study for something that does not currently exist. But 
if we have to do that, we can extrapolate from existing uses at other places. It happens to be outdoor winter now, so to get a realistic noise study of a five-piece acoustic string band in the middle of the winter is going to be difficult at best, um, but maybe not impossible. And pushing this project into next fall would make it potentially unviable. Go ahead, Carol. As far as uh, equipment, like saws and stuff, you probably can get decibel information uh, from the manufacturer. Uh, I don't know how you go about for bands, I agree with that. But for equipment, you certainly can get stuff online. Yeah, and I just want to make it clear that every project in the town center that's come through here in the last several years, has gone through this exact same process and had to comply with all the same requirements. Um, so, you know, the board has no choice but to enforce the ordinance. That's our job. That is correct, we recognize that. There is, um, there is a provision in your ordinance, though, that says, you know, essentially looks at the site conditions as is. Um, so you do have some, um, you do have some discretion um, with respect to some of these. And, you know, if we decide the parking's not one of them, okay. If we decide traffic's not one of them, okay. If we decide stormwater's not, it, that's fine. But the, 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 or, the ordinance does have a provision for, you know, existing site conditions. And I don't think we're, you know, if anything, we're moving stuff back, not, not closer. Okay, at this point, I'm going to open up the meeting to a public hearing. Public comment, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anyone who wishes to make a public comment on the issue of the completeness of the application? Please state your name and address, and we're going to give you three minutes. That's it? That's it. I'm yeah. Brandon Mitchell, uh, 6 Rocky Hill Road, Cape Elizabeth. Um, as far as completeness goes, I mean, it looks almost, you know, from a site plan drawing standpoint, it looks great. I understand the V wrap. Um, so I can't really speak to the overall completeness of it, but I can speak to Michael and his vision. And I've had the privilege to work with him and actually help get this project um, underway. And I just, he has a good proven track re record. And, and this, it's exciting that he's up here giving us a potential. Uh, something back to our community. I have three little kids and a farmer's market would be great. Um, food trucks, you know, much like, like we have in the park, close to where I live, would be great. So I uh, look forward, I'm sure we'll find a, a happy medium for all parties. I know you guys have to do your jobs as well, but um, uh, I look forward to uh, having this uh, eyesore turn around to something real nice that we can be proud of, so thank you. Hey everybody, uh, Zeb Meyerowitz, 12 Hill Way. Uh, I am the direct of Butter, just to declare that, and I think most of you recognize me from being up here about four years ago, something along those lines. Um, I certainly can sympathize with the applicant because you know having to meet all the various standards and setbacks in the ordinance, even on a lot our size, I think the developed subdivision was 1.2 acres or so. I mean, it is, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to hit the different setbacks and meet the need that you want. Um, you know, my experience was that we did have to meet the expectation of, of the site plan, and and um, I, I do expect that the, the board will probably run through that as well. Um, on terms of completeness, I, I am, uh, as the director butter, concerned about a, a lack of transparency in, in the expectation in terms of noise. I do understand that's a rule. You know, I don't know if there's a, a comment where the use cannot exceed the standard for the town. I believe it's as high as 65 decibels um, on the line. I recently had to uh, upgrade our generator on our commercial site, and that's the same setback that we had to meet for it. We just have to prove it. Um, we have some challenges with with 
with the sound side, I mean, I, I make no qualms about that, especially if we're going to be abutting it right to the southeast corner. But um, you know, I, I believe the ordinances stand as they are. Uh, same thing on the light. Um, we had to prove our light density as well as making sure that we weren't doing um, light pollution to our budding neighbors. So the towers that we had to put in had very specific shielding to make sure that we were illuminating our lot for terms of safety, um, but also not polluting to the direct abutters. Uh, I, I think that would have to be demonstrated in this as well. Um, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Cottage Farms Road. Uh, I do hope the board will take the applicant's um, consideration that this is not complete. Um, there are many factors that are missing on this, um, and I'm glad that the board um, can see that and from that. Uh, some of my concerns um, is that um, after hearing the presentation, I don't, I don't think there was enough spoken about the cottage industry manufacturing. Um, if there is going to be manufacturing on site, um, as you know, the ordinance says 25% of the retail space must be for whatever is being manufactured on site. Now, when I hear about something being manufactured on site, um, I think noise, and I heard the applicant say noise would only occur during classes. Uh, there might be some cutting, but if you're 25% of your retail sales is going to be a product that's being manufactured on site, I'm concerned about noise, and I would like to know what the applicant, um, I'd like to know more about it, what the applicant's gonna do. Um, what are you producing? Um, there just seems to be a lot of questions in regards to allowing this to go up to um, a, a level 10 on that, or stage 10. So I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned about um, uh, the traffic waiver. Um, I heard that this is not a convenience store, it's not gonna be so busy, and yet um, it was pointed out that and I heard about the food truck, and I pulled up this picture because I'm wondering, is that two food trucks? I, I, I don't know. It's the first time I've ever, so it is two food trucks. Okay, I don't think that was clear that it was two food trucks. So I hope that with the uh, seat, you can just keep it back there the way it was, with the two food trucks. So, um, so your seating needs to include that there are two food trucks. Uh, um, everything else that was going to be for the one food truck must be for the second food truck. I don't think that was clear that it was going to be two food trucks. This is the first time I'm seeing it. I didn't read it anywhere in there. So you got two food trucks, you got a hardware store, you got uh, people coming in to buy those crafts. I do see this as a very busy site and don't even throw in you know, the farmer's market and everything else. And I also, on social media this weekend, the applicant noted that he's working with the Black Point Surf Shop to open up a surf shop. And so I do wish that he would explain a little bit more so that the board is aware of the surf shop. Is this gonna be inside? Is this gonna be external? I'd like to know more about the surf shop. Um, as I noted, he said it on uh, social media, and I think it should be uh, presented to the board, not kept from the board. Uh, I'm glad you're doing the VRAP. I think it's very important that when you disturb the soils, that you know if there's contamination or not for the workers, for the people at the food trucks on the grass. I'm very happy to hear that the VRAP is under um, review now, because I know they can take a very long time um, so that's good to know um, that they've started. Um, those are some of my concerns. Oh, and I've hit the three minutes, so I'm glad that the board is reviewing this closely. Nice to see you guys. Good evening. My name is Mel Hag, and I'm on Feller Road and the um, Great Palm Terrace condos. Um, so I guess my... my um, my concerns are aesthetics and safety. Um, aesthetics in that um, there is this outdoor storage area, and I just wonder, and also the, the, the food trucks, and I just wonder if there were an addition made onto this building 
could that accommodate um, the, the outdoor material storage rack? And could it also accommodate perhaps a little food business um, instead of having the trucks um, and instead of having outdoor storage? So that just seems like that would be a, that might be a nice way to proceed on this project, but I understand that that would cost more money. Um, I was also, um, in terms of safety, um, on this site, as we all know, there were three generations of gas stations. Um, and on the, first, uh, on the first gas station, there was also auto repair. And so what I've noticed is that the DEP, I believe, pretty strongly recommended a phase two environmental site assessment here um, when it was supposed to be a dental office, excuse me, a dental office. And that was gonna change nothing on the site. It wasn't gonna make more grass. It wasn't gonna regrade the site in any way. Um, it wasn't gonna cover any pavement. But expanding the vegetated area, I would just think it would be a really good idea to have a phase two environmental site assessment just to find out um, if there is contamination on the site. There may not be, but there may be. If people are gonna be enjoying a concert there and sitting on the grass, um, if there are gonna be farmers, farmers, uh, a farmer's market with kids running around, I would think that might be a beneficial thing to know exactly what's there and if there is contamination there, how to most effectively protect the public from it. Um, and I just, um, I, manage the brownfields program for the city of Portland and I just say that because I want to say that there is money that I believe that would be available to help this applicant do a phase two without him spending any money at all. Um, it could probably come from the Greater Portland Council of Governments which I think may have um, assessment money so that would not cost this property owner anything but if there was a cleanup certainly there would be some, um, some cost to that. Um, I guess that pretty much covers my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, board. Chris Rauscher, 53 Beach Bluff Terrace. Um, I don't know the applicant. I'm not very familiar with the plans. I can't speak to the completeness. What I do know is that um, we have three kids, and we rode our bikes this afternoon past the site to pick our daughter up from second grade at Pond Cove. Um, and we'd love to be able to ride our bikes to this site, not just past it, to buy things at the lumbery or to go to the food trucks or to go to the farmer's market instead of getting in our car and driving past it to South Portland and spending money in that community. So again, not familiar with the details, but we'd very much like to be able to invest more dollars in our community and do it in a way that we can access through either bike or, or on foot. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to make a comment? Okay. Seeing no one, the uh, public comment is closed. Um, so board members, any more thoughts? Do we want to... Might address some of the questions that were comments. Yes. Certainly. Um, in regards to the cottage manufacturing, I put that in there because the code officer said that if I have any saws, I need to list that as cottage manufacturing, but I'm not manufacturing anything. The goal of the saws on site are for one, the classrooms, and B, if someone wants a piece of wood cut. If they've got a compact car and they just need a six foot piece of wood, we'll cut it for them. But, that's the extent of the cottage manufacturing. And uh, my post on Facebook wasn't that I'm opening a surf shop, it's just that I've been speaking with Black Point and I thought it'd be great if we could offer rentals in the summertime. And that would be inside the shop, a small section of the shop, but again, I thought that would be a nice addition to the community. And a lot of these, a lot of the, um, a lot of the extra work that's coming from this site plan are for activities that are community-based. And my goal is to open my store, the Lumbery, and if that means not having a farmer's market, not having food trucks, not having live music, I'm, I'm okay with that because I need to generate revenue, and I'm not generating revenue from food trucks, farmer's market, live music. It's from my store. 
And so my goal right now is to get approved for the store. And if, and if I need to table those items to a later date, I'm fine with that. But um, the busy season starts in June. And if I miss the busy season, then my store won't survive. And so my goal right now is the store. And the other items that are for the community, I would love to have pass at the same time, but if that's tabled to a later date, I'm okay with that as well. May I speak as a resident? No. No, you can speak as a member of the team. Okay, Maureen. I, I just want to, um, you know, Ben McDougall is our code officer and he's not here now, so um, I feel obligated to make clear that the code officer isn't telling you that you have to do cottage industry manufacturing. What, what the code officer was saying is that if you're going to be using saws, and my understanding is that you are, own a contracting business, and that there is some use of, of any kind of equipment, and if you're going to use any kind of equipment in that building that's related to your contracting business, you really need to, the best way that that can be permitted is if you call it cottage industry manufacturing. You don't have to apply for cottage industry manufacturing, but if you pull out one saw, one piece of power equipment as part of your contracting business, then you potentially have a problem with compliance under the town center zoning. That, that is what the issue is about. And, and, and yeah, I just wanna make sure that's clear that you know, I do understand that you're, I believe the planning board recent, well, a few years ago, approved contracting business for you on Shore Road. And I think you're not there anymore. So the assumption is that you're going here. Right, but and, and, and excuse me, through the chair, if you're speaking, you gotta be at the podium. <laughs> um, to address that, we didn't even use, the, we set up Saws and Shop, but we didn't use it, and you can check with all the neighbors that are literally 15 feet from our property. There, there was never Saws run there. I mean, we've got residences as close as can be to my building at 535 Shore Road. And so, Michael, you're showing a saw in the plan. Right, so and the saws are for cutting wood for people and for also teaching classes. So if someone wants a piece of plywood cut, we'll cut it. And then later on in classes, if someone wants to know how to install a door or build stringers, we'll have the saws there. So that's the goal. So you said build stringers? Yeah, so you would be using them. Well, it's for classroom. If, someone, if, if we want to teach someone how to build stairs, yeah, we'll, we'll have a sample. So yeah, so we will be using the saws for the purpose of teaching classes. But it's not for manufacturing, mass manufacturing. It's not for your sales. business? No. But I, so, but you said something earlier about somebody showing up with a compact car and having to get a board that's six feet. You cut that for them. Yeah, oh yeah. We, so that would be part of the lumbery business. That's part of the lumbery, right. It's not part of my separate business, which is a handyman business. Okay, so yeah, you would be using the saws for. in connection to the lumbery business okay. if somebody Absol needed a cut. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. We're hearing two different things. That's well, why I, think, I, I think just... Maureen was referring to my handyman business, and that's what she was talking about. If I used the saws for my handyman business, then she said it would be a different category. But I think what was said earlier is that if you use the saws for the lumbery business, that's why the code enforcement advised that you should be applying for a cottage right. industry and I use. I to address her, her uh, comment that I'm cottage manufacturing, so I'm manufacturing a ton of stuff, uh, which I'm not. We're not actually mass-producing items. Yeah. So, I, I mean, your point about dropping everything except the business, I think that if you want to move ahead quickly, you either, you're, you're not going to figure out how to get the farmer's market, the food truck, the concert. I mean, you're, that's going to take a lot of thought to make all of that work on paper. So you may be better off ditching that for the moment and so coming back. Effort into figuring out how much parking space we needed for each item, not including the live music. And, and we figured out that we do have enough parking spaces for the farmer's market and the food trucks and the classroom and the office and the retail. It's all in the site plan. Uh, 
So one, one of the comments that was made earlier about the parking, and it was brought up that everybody who's in the town center has to go through these standards. And these standards aren't set by this planning board. The standards are set by the town council. Right. Um, the town center ordinances, uh, they are very strict because the people on the town council and the comprehensive plan and the town center committee that looked at this made them that way. And it was brought up that people don't have to, com or people haven't had to comply. Um, I think you would, find that different if you went to speak to well, one of the, uh, uh, Dr. Merowitz said about that, but also Sea Salt is one of those uh, locations that had, uh, that used to be a real estate business. They tore down that building and when the owner of Sea Salt came before the planning board, uh, he put his parking in the back. And the reason he put his parking in the back was because he was being compliant with the town standards. So when we were looking at the original, or the, excuse me, the old site plan for the old Cumberland Farms, uh, the reason that this site now uh, is there's a, uh, the ordinance is requiring this 35 set foot setback is because on the old plans, the old site plan, is that there is no parking that is adjacent to Scott Dyer or Old Ocean, or excuse me, Ocean House Road. Um, and that's requiring the, the 35 foot setback. So um, I understand that that's the reason that you're doing the parking. I would love to see more vegetation as opposed to the beat up old parking lot and gravel pit that it is right now. Um, but we do have standards that we have to ensure that every applicant um, right. abide by. My, one concern I do have about the food trucks and if, if you want, we can just move on from that if you're gonna say that you're gonna basically withdraw that request is that if, it, it, when you put food trucks within that 35 foot setback, you're basically using that as a parking lot. And so I would not be going, I would not be able to say, okay, I can ignore the fact that you are parking the food trucks on the grass um, within that 35 foot setback, which is required by the, by the zoning ordinance and by the town, uh, the town center ordinances. Um, I would have to say that if you're gonna use those food trucks, you're gonna have to use them in the parking lot as being provided. Well, as I stated earlier, with having to move back 35 feet and still trying to provide something that I think the community would really love, you know, we're scratching our heads to yeah. try and figure out how to do it with, I, our, with our parking that's been cut back. So it's sort of like we want something, but we can't get it. And so we do feel that the food trucks on the grass is actually a pretty good solution. I, it's, I can see why you think that, but at the same time, we would have to, well, I would have to ignore the fact that you are parking that within a zone that we're not supposed to have parking. And I would love food trucks too, don't get me wrong. I live within walking distance of the old Cumberland Farms. It would be a great thing that I think would have uh, for us to have, but we just can't turn a blind eye. And I understand, but sometimes the words in the code are, are a detriment to what the community actually wants. And that, and that to me is a bit sad that we can't have things we want that would benefit almost everyone because of wording in the code. We might agree with you, but at the same time, that's not what we do. We don't make the ordinances. I, I that's what the town that. council does. That. And so this was my proposal with the food trucks. and. Um, I might be alone on that. Uh, you might be able to get some other people on the board to, to look past that and say, okay, it's just temporary parking. But I, I'm looking, I, even at this design, I'm looking at those food trucks and they are parked right on the grass within that place that we're not supposed to have parking, but based upon what the town center uh, ordinances say. So the engineer did make a comment about parking the food trucks on the grass that he didn't think that it, you'd have to give a better surface more resilient surface for right. parking and the food trucks. Um, what do you call it, Jen? It's sort of just hard packed gravel where the food trucks are going to be parked. So it, now you're taking is, out your grass area. Yeah, though. this is this is the stuff we have to see, though. Yeah. And I know that you said that you're not going to ask for completeness tonight, but uh, this idea that okay, let's just do it and then we'll see how it works out—that's not what we do as a board. No, 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 I understand that. We didn't wait. We actually put a lot of. Oh, I know you put a you put a ton of effort, and I commend you for how it. To, how to fit everything in? Um, and just to address the VRAP question, I have been in touch with DEP about a phase two and. Becky Blaze at DP said it wasn't required and I just need to provide her with the environmental management plan. So I'm working with Campbell Environmental to put that together right now. So we are addressing the contaminants on the property. Did you say it wasn't or was? Wasn't. Oh, wasn't. Well, I'm sorry. Did you say it was or wasn't required? 
Uh, phase two is not required. Okay, no, she's thank not you. Required again. Sorry, I just uh, didn't hear you clearly. Sorry, thanks. Pete. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, Joe certainly made a good point that if, you're, if speed is your main concern, that perhaps some of the ancillary uses, which are kind of hard to get our heads around, maybe could wait for another day. I mean, there's no reason why what you've done already wouldn't serve those other uses if you can come back later and satisfy the board that it works. Um, and I don't think the board wants to make you feel penalized for your creativity. But when you say, I'm gonna have a <coughs> acoustic band concert, which I assume means no amplification, right? Just string. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, how many, where, how many people, how do you, how do you handle that? It's, it's, it's kind of hard to give a roll your own permit out, at least particularly in the town center district, which is, you know, quite a sensitive and controlled district, if, if more than probably most commercial districts that you'll experience. So I don't think anybody in the board is, wants to make your life hard for you or make you feel like you're being treated unfairly or that you're, the townspeople are being denied something they're really crying for. I think it's just a matter of, of having a plan that we can get our heads around and figure out if it meets the letter and the spirit of the town center zoning. So I'm, I sort of tend to favor what Joe just advised you and come back in with a use plan for some of these ancillary uses that you could explain and we could figure out whether it's all of our issues are taken care of. Okay, yeah, I thought we did that fairly well with the food trucks and the farmer's market. I know we didn't address it with the live music. And uh, I think because in the code it says for that, you need to go to, for council approval regardless. So uh, our site plan does address the food trucks and the farms. Well, market. your plan doesn't show where the food trucks are gonna be, does it? It, it does, but it doesn't match the, what he showed us. Uh, mm. well, well, this is good feedback though for next time, but it, it sounds like if I do want approval, I'll need to, and so will a traffic study still be required if I'm not proposing to have the food trucks, farmers market, and live music? Well, given, given what was brought up earlier about this location and the, the dangerousness of the, or that the, um, that intersection has been listed by the state as one of the more hazardous ones in town, um, I would want to see a little bit more information with regards to why we should waive it. Um, because I'm not convinced right now. I still want to find out more inf information about what the lumber is going to be. I know what you've told us, but is it going to be co um, village retail only uh, manufacturing? You indicated that there was going to be uh, a dust collection system. I know those dust collection systems, even if they're outside, make a lot of noise. You heard in a butter uh, comment about the standards that he has to, had to go through with regards to generators. Um, I know your representation said that uh, getting that information hypothetically is very difficult. You can't do sound studies. For every one of the cell towers that has come before this board, we have required them to provide information for us when it comes to sound studies. And that was for the benefit of every neighbor and every abutter that was there to make sure that those decibel levels were going to be compliant with what the standards were. So I would want to see some more information with regards to the dust collection system, if there is going to be one and what that would uh, be on the outside. Um, if there was going to be a circular saw that's in use at all, um, what that information would be as well. Okay, and do the studies show that if you have a, I mean, I haven't checked out how to gauge sound, but if you have got a building made of block and you're running a saw inside, are there studies that show, I mean, do I just go outside with a, a sound meter and say, if it's I, you got to hear it? it you've got a great team, so I'm sure that they would have some information for you on how to figure that out, because quite frankly, I don't know exactly how that figures out, but I know what we've seen in the past, and the information that's been brought to us with this had satisfied us to the point that we gave approval to that, because we had that information, but when we don't have the information, saying yes or no is very difficult. You want to avoid the acoustic team that modeled the new arena in Westbrook. That's cool, Joe. Rock, rock. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, we would like to, uh, before we leave this evening, uh, address two of the waivers that uh, 
um, kind of carried down the list a little bit. One is for stormwater. Um, I don't know that we need any type of stormwater report, given that, uh, again, all the stormwater flows toward that north end, which is we're not touching, and we're decreasing the amount of pavement by almost 40% uh, and revegetating that. There's really no reason for a you know, stormwater study. Um, Do you want me to? Just a, like a straw poll. It's, we're not asking yeah, for a vote. Right. Maureen. So the... The standard in the ordinance doesn't require you to come up with calculations when you're decreasing the amount of storm, the, the amount of impervious surface. But it does say that even if you're decreasing the amount of impervious surface, that a low impact development method should be incorporated into your stormwater plan. Okay, but there, what I'm asking is that there's no specific stormwater plan because we are reducing. When you talk about low impact development, you're talking about what can you do to be able to further. Just, I think you just need a narrative, right? Uh, a basic that's fine. Narrative. There, there, it says here, decrease to increase of less than 10,000 square feet. The submission, the submission information highlights a professional engineer is not required, pre and post calculations are not required, but the review standard requires that an LID method be incorporated. And but we've already, we can. I, we can, I feel we can confident that. that you can come up with that. Absolutely, we've yes. shown it, but we can describe it. That's fine. Oh, that's, that's the answer we were looking for. And then the other issue is the lighting. Um, there's more lighting out there than we probably need. Most of it's on the public. It's the Cobra lights that are literally standing on the street. Adding more lights within a few feet of overhead Cobra lights doesn't seem to make any sense. Um, plus the additional lights, pole lights that are already on the site. That's a lot of lighting. You, I think you mainly need to show that the light falls off to the proper intensity at the property lines? Well, that's not a problem because the, mo the mass majority of the lighting is coming from the utility, the cobra lights on the utility poles. So what we're asking for is rather than doing a full lighting study, there's all, already a uh, suffusion of light out in that area. There's probably more light than anybody would want. Um, and in lieu of doing a lighting study, we just don't think on the site of this caliber that it's necessary. Um, again, we're not asking for a specific vote, but um, for those of you who may live in that direction, I just invite you tonight to go take a look at that. Glance off to the left when you're driving down Ocean House Road. That's probably one of the more light intensive areas in the town. So I, I mean, if, you're, if you are referencing the comments that were made by staff, there were two lighting issues. One was that the sign that you proposed, you described it as being lightly illuminated. And the ordinance requires that you actually provide information on what the illumination is. The illustration of the sign that you showed had an overhanging light. That lighting was not included in the illumination study that you provided. I couldn't find anything on there that suggested it was incorporated. So that was the first item. The second item was a beyond the, beyond the level of completeness discussion that was thrown to the board. And that was that any project in the town center is required to build sidewalks along its frontage. So this property has a tremendous amount of frontage on Scott Dyer Road and Ocean House Road. Fortunately, the town has recently rebuilt the sidewalk along the entire length of the Scott Dyer Road frontage. So that's, that's a huge benefit for the property and for the applicant. The sidewalk on the Ocean House side has not been rebuilt and is in very, very poor condition. Um, staff have suggested that this is a good opportunity to require the applicant to rebuild that sidewalk. But the memo did not suggest that the applicant be responsible for that. Instead, the, the, the memo said that typically when an applicant is required to build a sidewalk, they build a five to six foot wide sidewalk, they put in a grass esplanade, they plant street trees and pedestrian lighting. So the, the suggestion to the board was to discuss even though the sidewalk is in poor condition, to not require that the sidewalk be reconstructed by the applicant. Even though there isn't a lot of trees there, to not require there be additional trees, but there is no pedestrian lighting in that esplanade. And if there was no sidewalk there at all, the applicant would be responsible for doing that entire section. So instead, the, sec the suggestion for the board to consider was to at least consider adding pedestrian level lighting, which is different from Cobra lights 
to that section of sidewalk. It should also be noted that on the, the land side or the east side of Ocean House Road in that, exact same, in that exact same area, the town this summer will be building a new sidewalk with an esplanade, street trees, and pedestrian lighting. So this is a gateway to the town and an opportunity to kind of dress it up and have it match. So that was brought up beyond the level of completeness. It had nothing to do with the study and it had everything to do with the town center standards for pedestrian sidewalks. So I think the, the Cobra light, whether or not there's an, enough light is almost beside the point because the purpose of those lights is to create a visual continuity with the lighting on the sidewalks. And they're, you know, it's, a, it's an appearance and visual thing. It's not simply to get enough light onto the sidewalk. Light poles purely for aesthetic? Well, if I just want to bring up one point. Not purely for, but I mean, it's part of it. That's the town center standard is to have lights. Well, and that's I'm sort of why we're asking for the lights. waiver because, I mean, it's, I understand that it's nice to be able to have continuity in, the, in any given town, but if we're looking at light poles, the purpose of which is to create light, there's already so much light out there that all that's gonna do is add. Yeah, but I'm saying lights. it's not just for the purpose of creating light, it's for the purpose of creating visual continuity with the new sidewalk that Maureen was talking about. So, I mean, you could put in the new lights that comply with the town center requirements and take out the Cobra lights. You know, we can't take out Cobra lights. Those are DOT lights. It's, they have to stay there. One, one thing, though, I just want to point out as well, um, as someone pointed out, that one of our purposes is to look towards the future. Um, I drive by that, so I'm gonna take a look tonight when I go by, but at the same time, if you're relying on DOT lights or town lights or uh, municipal lights at all to illuminate this property, what happens if all of a sudden the town decides, you know what, we're gonna pull those lights? Huh. And then you don't have the net, or that property basically becomes unsafe because of powers that be, are beyond the property owner, they decide not to do, uh, to take away those lights and then it's not illuminated. Um, so that's a concern of mine. Um, the other thing too is I did hear, and I don't know if there's exterior lighting that's been proposed on the outside of the building, but that there was talk about these classes that were gonna happen after the lumbery was closed. Uh, so I would assume that as, as some of those, especially in the winter months, are gonna happen after hours when it's dark and I would expect that there's gonna be lighting on the outside of the building like the old Cumberland Farms had uh, so people can get in and out without having to worry about darkness or anything like that. So um, I'm not saying that it, it's requiring a study but at this, it, or that I'm not willing to waive the study but I just need some more information on it. No, and that's fine and I appreciate the comment. There are actually two freestanding pole lights that are on the property um, that are around the perimeter of the parking lot and they already exist. Um, along with the other wall packs in the building. So the lighting from a security safety standpoint, is, that's not an issue. Right. Um, what is the issue is intensely expensive for it uh, to be able to put in you know, the, the gas lamp type of lighting effect that you see in front of the police station. Um, that's great if the community is willing to do that, to be able to put that basically a burden in terms of lighting onto a site of this caliber. Um, you know, this is not a Walmart and it's gonna revert again. Remember, this, this is the fourth time that my office has been here uh, regarding projects that couldn't make this, this site work. And it's been an eyesore in the middle of town. Talk about a gateway to Cape Elizabeth. This is about one of the ugliest pieces of property that anybody's ever gonna see. And we're trying to make it better. And the site's tough. I mean, we've got two fronts on it and a very unusually shaped parcel. There's not a whole lot that could go in here. And we found somebody that uh, was willing to be able to go through some entrepreneurship to be able to put in a small business. And it's gonna get to the point where, once again, it's priced out of the market for something that isn't necessary. It's not required and it's not necessary. And toward that end, we're just asking for, as Maureen mentioned, if it's not a specific requirement as far as a waiver is concerned, that's fine. Um, what we would like to do in the essence of safety lighting is say that it's already there, including not just the Cobra lights, but the lights that we already do have on site. To add several different poles in that same area is going to cause a huge diffusion of light where it's really not necessary. 
That's the only comment that we were making. So that's not a waiver. So it's because it's not a specific requirement. Just a comment. If there's any other comments or questions, we have to answer here. Uh, I have one comment about this uh, parking. I, I'm sure these calculations come from some standard somewhere. Um, hmm? Our ordinance. Um, it just seems, and you know, I'm sure our ordinance is probably mostly correct, but looking at the farm and fish market um, calculations, I'm just wondering, and I don't know if this is the five spaces is meant for, is that just people visiting to shop there? Because I'm also thinking about sort of envisioning farmers markets, which are great, but I just wanted to make sure this was considered. You know, it, it seems like a lot of times these guys are driving in these huge trucks or trucks and trailers in some cases, and just some thought needs to go into like where, where are those people gonna park? You know, how, how many uh, people are gonna be selling? Um, and so, so how many vehicles is that gonna translate to and where are they gonna park? Because um, if this is going on during store hours, then you've got the, the additive, which you did do. I mean, you, you're saying if all this is going on is 22, I think five seems just, in my opinion, low if you're considering both the sales staff and uh, the people shopping there. So um, I don't know if you're gonna go forward with that or not, but just that definitely needs to give be given some thought in my mind. We can certainly look at that again. Anything else? I think uh, one other thing I thought of is um, if you have uh, for the farmer's market and the concert, uh, would you have uh, outdoor uh, um, uh, portable toilets on site for no, that? The building would be open for that. What was that? The, use of the, the building would be open for that? For the use of the bathroom. Because you said in your application exactly the opposite. Yeah. We can have portable Yeah, and you're going to find one issue. toilet's not enough for. I'm sorry? You're going to find one toilet is not enough for more than 10 people. And we can have portlets, to be sure. The, the whole issue. But I mean, that's the kind of thing you do need to show. Like, you need to say, okay, we're going to have three porta potties located here when we have. The farmers market. I mean, we need that kind of information. And, and these are exactly the solicitation of comments that we were looking for, and we just wanted to do it here officially so that we could be on the record for doing that, as opposed to another workshop. Um, so we appreciate those comments, and, and keeping in mind, as uh, the applicant has mentioned, first and foremost, it's a small retail establishment. Everything else, he's not profiting from. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. It's more of a community issue. Farmers market, Cape Elizabeth doesn't have one. We're offering the ability to do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If the bands don't work, it's kind of a cool family thing, but if it doesn't work, if the board doesn't like that, we won't do it, um, et cetera. So it's really come down to the lumbery, as Peter mentioned, that's the issue, um, is the lumbery more than anything else, and that these rest of the esoteric issues, if they don't work, then they don't work. And that's the comments that we were looking for this evening. Jim? Uh, my my gut feeling is that you, you need to start making money so you get the retail part going. I don't think, my gut feeling again, the site will not support the way you have it right now, uh, music, it won't support food trucks, both of which I would like to see personally, don't get me wrong, I think it's a great idea, but I don't think the site will support it with parking and toilets. And uh, lighting, I don't know. I'm, when I leave here, I'm going to go drive by. I just, how many times, thousands of times I've driven by, but I just never looked at it with that in mind. So I, I'm not willing to commit on that right now. So, but if you want to get this thing going, my sense is you drop those, those auxiliary or what's the right term, ancillary uses and focus on your core business so you can get this thing going. Jim and Peter said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then just 
just uh, we like these ideas. But yeah, we just we need to see ideas. more information and see if we can be supported. It's there's standards that have to be met. You know this, and sure. it's a very difficult site. And we've seen you here before. Hopefully, this will be the one that works, and we can get something in there um, that will be a community benefit. But it's, it, we have standards that we have to abide by. We have a job that we have to do, and that's what we, that's what the town's tasked us with. All right, would someone like to make a motion? Well, if you withdraw the application. No. Okay, where are we? Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Yam Yam's LLC for site plan review to include a retail lumber store with a business office workshop and class space food truck farmer's market and live music located at 287 Ocean House Road be deemed incomplete. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. Motion approved. Thanks for your time. item of business is uh, public comment. Is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment? <laughs> All right, seeing none, the public comment session is closed. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion we adjourn. A second? All in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. <laughs>